It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's Nightly News Roundup. I'm Roland Boyden, and this is a special edition of 5.45 Live uh, on deck tonight. We'll talk about the holidays, why not? It's our last one before the break. Uh, plenty of municipal drama will hit all the headlines on top of our holiday fun, and uh, apparently the world is coming to an end, or so some say. Others say it's just a Mayan misconception. All that and more. Remember, we do it in 15 minutes. I bet I can even uh, do it in a little less so we can all get out there and enjoy the day. Uh, in the meantime, stick with us right here on 545 Live. Sunday, town manager of Brattleboro, Vermont. I'm here with my department heads, and we all want to wish you a happy holiday season. I'm Gene Rim with the Brattleboro Police Department. Drink responsibly and designate the driver. I'm Mike Bacossi from the Brattleboro Fire Department. Make sure all your electrical decorations and extension cords are in good shape before you use them. Well, welcome back to this December 21st, 2012 edition of 545 Live. I'm Roland Boyden, uh, set to take you through the uh, rest of our uh, pre-holiday programming. That's right, uh, this is our last 545 Live broadcast, not only before the holiday season, but apparently uh, before the world ends, though, uh, as you can see, seems like we're... Uh, we're all right. Pop culture interpretations of the Mayan calendar suggested that today could be the last day uh, of the world as we know it, but uh, seems like we're going to be all right after all. But anyway, we All right, that's enough. Thought I'd uh, leave you hanging on there for a moment, thinking that uh, the world had really come to an end. No, in fact, we're still here. We're still in downtown, and we're still uh, making 545 Live a little bit more engaging there, uh, taking a look at what might have happened if downtown Brattleboro had uh, had a giant battleship come crashing through the corner of Elliott Street and Main Street. Might have helped clear up traffic a little bit down there. All right. That's enough chit-chat on this special uh, holiday edition of 545 Live. I want to make sure we have time to get to uh, all our stories uh, and then get to head out there and enjoy the, the rest of the day. So uh, we'll, we'll get ready to uh, jump right into a few things. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back. I'm Steve Barrett from the Department of Public Works. Please slow down on the ice-covered roadways and take your time to get there safely. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year! From, from the, the members, members of the Brattleboro Fire Department. Department. Have a safe and happy holiday. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Hanukkah, and all that. Happy Holidays! Thank you so much. Happy Holidays and a Happy New Year. Happy Holidays to our viewers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is <one. laughs> It's been an honor and a privilege to to house our homeless. Um, it's just been amazing how how wonderful these folks are. How they teach me. They grab a shovel and they'll shovel the snow out of the way, and and they're just amazing people. So it's for the last seven years, it has just been wonderful. So thank you and God bless you. Welcome back to 545 Live footage of the vigil for the homeless held down in Pliny Park just uh, hours ago, courtesy of our hardworking 545 Live content specialist and longtime BCTV producer, Maria Dominguez, that day, uh, an international day that uh, commemorates the homeless. Uh, it was initiated in Brattleboro by the late Melinda Busnell, who uh, dedicated her life 
to helping those in need, the hungry and the homeless. Uh, included in the gathering was Tom Apollo from the uh, Home at Last organization, which is dedicated to housing the homeless, uh, specifically veterans. And uh, Pastor Sue, now legendary for her uh, community advocacy for the homeless through the First Baptist Church, part of that uh, clip and interview we were just looking at. All right, uh, we're going to move on and talk about uh, a few cell phone tower things. That seems to be all the buzz for that. Let's head ourselves uh, into the newsroom for a moment and uh, talk a little bit about this story. All right. We'll start in Newfane where beleaguered residents fresh off a standoff with the uh, AT&T proposed cell phone tower now find themselves facing the raising of a new tower, this time courtesy of the Burlington-based communication project headed up by Vitel, or the Vermont Telephone Company. The tower is now scheduled to be raised from the Wyndham County Sheriff's Newfane compound, something Sheriff Keith Clark says will benefit everyone, from cell phone users to emergency responders to taxpayers countywide. Uh, at last night's Newfane Select Board meeting, he talked about the process for determining the tower's location, uh, and uh, included in that is uh, a few things uh, of note worth checking out on our video on demand, but let's roll the clip. Take a look. Over almost a year, it went back and forth and then it got quiet. And I had not heard anything from VTEL and I wasn't sure where we were in the process. And I received an email from VTEL. He said, well, we were told you didn't want it. I was not aware of that. I thought we were still moving forward in the process. Wyndham County Sheriff Keith Clark at last night's Newfane Select Board meeting, which you can find at brettlebrotv.org, where all these meetings go up the next day in our video on demand, where you can watch at your leisure, and you can even skim ahead item to item. I think that one started about 30 minutes in, if uh, you're curious to follow along with that story, which seems to uh, work its way into a Newfane Select Board meeting every time they meet. All right, let's uh, move on here as all my technology goes crashing down around me. All right, uh, for that, let's head back into the close-up. There we go. For the sixth year in a row, Vermont has uh, walked away with the coveted healthiest state in the nation. Did I just say close-up? Maybe I meant uh, doing this. There we go. This is going to make this uh, story, I think, uh, much much better here as we uh, get get ready to uh, keep, keep it going with the stories. All right, uh, for the sixth year in a row, Vermont, has walked away with the coveted Healthiest State in the Nation Award from the United Health Foundation, who released their report this week, raising their claims uh, on the data from the Center for Disease Control, uh, along with phone interviews they conducted. Key determinants include low incident of uh, infectious disease, a low prevalence of uh, bir low birth weight infants, a low rate of uninsured population, ready availability of primary care physicians, and uh, high school graduation rate. Some now predict that uh, with uh, single payer healthcare coming to Vermont, those uh, numbers could go up even more. Vermont could see a seventh year as the uh, healthiest state in the nation, something Governor Peter Shumlin is awfully proud about. It's something that means a lot to us in terms of ensuring that Vermonters have healthy, productive lives, the best quality of life in the country, as I've said many, many times. And also there's a direct relationship between the health of Vermonters and the health of our economy. Peter Sumlin under press conference this week talking about Vermont's uh, gold statue we get for being the, maybe a gold food pyramid we get for being the healthiest state in the nation. All right, moving on. Peter Shumlin uh, was was at uh, the State House earlier talking about death with dignity this week, something that uh, landed itself uh, at a forum in Brattleboro. It's among the bills likely to be introduced in Montpelier this winter, the much maligned death with dignity bill, which uh, also uh, would allow physicians to write terminally ill patients a lethal prescription. This has prompted Wyndham County Senator Jeanette White, who plans to sponsor the bill, and Wyndham 4 Rep Mike Merwicky, who's a strong proponent of the measure, uh, to host a public forum on the matter. Now, advocates of this legislation cite the necessity to accelerate the inevitable, inevitable in cases of extreme suffering, while opponents have uh, linked it to euthanasia. Some say even suicide. Again, hardworking content specialist Maria Dominguez was there to gather footage. Uh, this is the bill's sponsor, potential sponsor, Jeanette White, talking about her concern. My main concern is that people have control over that very last moment of their life, as opposed to 
And so I'm going to reflect that because I don't like the way it sounds you're hastening. All right, uh, moving on. We'll go uh, back into the stories here. Just a month uh, after picking up an award from the Environmental Protection Agency for sustainable design components of their new store's construction, the Brattleboro Food Co-op finds themselves at the center of a federally funded spotlight short film released this week on the EPA's official video library, a piece they've been kind enough to share with us. And uh, we'll get that clip here as well. Take a look at uh, what... Uh, they're federally funded filmmakers have whipped up here. We were actually considering moving out of this location because we had run out of space to grow in, the, in that old location that we were in. We uh, talked to our community about that and uh, they were very adamant that we stay downtown. And the business community said, look guys, you are one of the two or three anchor businesses in our community here. As promised, uh, as we move on here, we'll talk about uh, a little bit more municipal coverage here. This is courtesy of BCTV's newest hire, Rich Melanson, who heads out to uh, film every one of the select board meetings in BCTV's seven surrounding communities and uh, the Leland and Gray School Board meetings. So, at this week's Putney Select Board uh, meeting, an amiable group moved across tricky decisions like raising sewer rates without debate and received thanks from members of the Putney General Store Reopening Committee for the board's role in obtaining government funds for the project. Uh, as for a progress report, members of the group say uh, they're pleased with the results, but it'll take time for the new store to catch on. Uh, let's take a look at that as well. You know, the truth is, I think it takes people a while. And, you know, we were trying to make sure we had our general store again. But really, it's a new store, so yeah. people really have to get used to it. All right, uh, a few more things to wrap up with here. Let's talk about basketball this week. Uh, the uh, BUHS TV crew made their live basketball coverage debut again uh, for a winning game with the Colonels uh, taking uh, a 47 41 victory in their boys' varsity game. Now, this did show live on BCTV. Uh, through hard work on the part of many an individual up at the BUHS TV crew, in, uh, including Karen Tronofsky, who's been working hard up there to uh, get those kids to go out, make some programming, and help us get live coverage of these basketball games, something uh, I'm excited to take a look at. Now, uh, you can also see the full rebroadcast of this game, which is uh, something I, I find uh, excellent to watch local sports. You can uh, find that, again, in that video on demand I've been uh, hyping and talking about oh so much here through the, uh, the coming time. Uh, BrattleboroTV.org, where you'll find a, a little button on the side uh, of our homepage that uh, specifies you can find every single local program and live streaming for uh, our video on demand all at that BrattleboroTV.org. Now on the right sideline, it's Claflin. He can't shoot it. And McAuliffe with another steal. Love his defense tonight. McAuliffe's been spectacular off the ball. He's deflected three and stolen one. Patno a bomb. It's good for three. Nine nothing. Rattleball. 417 into the first quarter. All right, uh, a few things to uh, check out here. Uh, I want to talk a little bit in our waning moments here about a few. Uh, new things coming up on BCTV. Let's see what's new programming-wise here. There we go. Uh, this uh, is a little flashback to the Roger Bland Christmas this special. This is the Roger Bland Christmas special right after 60 Minutes, and we'll be right back. There you go. That's going to show us part of a Best of BCTV retrospective. Uh, on New Year's Eve night. Uh, we're also going to be showing all this next week. The best of 545 Live 2012. All right, that's full lid for us, everybody. Thanks for checking in. Uh, be sure to uh, catch up with us next week uh, with that best of that we were talking about, and we'll return in the, the coming year with a brand-new slate of uh, 545 Live fun. All right, that's all I got to say, uh, except maybe good night, everybody. We're going to close out. I just got word from our floor manager that uh, Karen Collins, the theme song.